Hello everybody. Um, today is Monday morning, March 29th, 2021. Uh, I am glad you're here so that we can uh, study the Word together and reflect on it and uh, make it have an impact in our lives. Um, I like to pray for us all. I like to pray for not just peace in our our nation and the world and the, around us, but peace in our hearts. Because I think that uh, uh, we, we have to start individually. Um, we always have to be responsible for ourselves. And if we have peace in our hearts, that will transcend down through our communities and uh, make things better for everybody. Anyway, today's um, reading comes to us from... Uh, Matthew, uh, chapter 26, verses 69 to 75, and it is titled, Faltering Faith. Now Peter was sitting out in the courtyard, and a servant girl came to him. You also were with Jesus of Galilee, she said, but he denied it before them all. I don't know what you're talking about, he said. Then he went out of the gateway, where another servant girl saw him and said to the people there, this fellow was with Jesus of Nazareth. He denied it again with an oath. I don't know the man. After a little while, those standing there went up to Peter and said, Surely you are one of them. Your accent gives you away. Then he began to call down curses, and he swore to them, I don't know the man. Immediately a rooster crowed. Then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken. Before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. Well, um... This account of the Bible is really tragic uh, in a lot of ways because Peter uh, was so dear to Jesus, and he loved and <clears throat> and uh, Peter loved Jesus so much. Uh, he always uh, asked Jesus uh, that uh, you know if he felt you know important, basically, you know. Uh, Peter was uh, called by Jesus to build his church upon. His name, Pietro, Pietro in, in Italian means a rock. His name means rock. You know, upon you I will build my church, Jesus said. Uh, but, you know, again, he's human. And uh, after witnessing what happened to Jesus from his arrest, where he tried to even defend Jesus, to um, him being whipped and made fun of and stripped and made the carry the cross and he just uh, fell apart. He became, you know, the human side of him showed and it showed really, you know, really vividly. Um, you know, we'd fight or flight and, uh, you know, this this part of the Bible, he's he's fleeing and he's fighting, fighting verbally back. Uh, he's, he's doing both. Um, he really was scared off, you know. When Jesus died, he was—I—I I, I assume he just felt hopeless. Um, Jesus was his whole world, and uh, the whole—you know—within one day, the whole world collapsed. Uh, everything that he knew and had been and had been doing for years with Jesus, day to day living together, uh, traveling together, ministering to people together, was in his mind, I guess, all over, and he didn't understand. Um, uh, he saw finality in it. He didn't understand that Jesus had to die. Jesus had to die to pay the price for our sins. And he also had to die really to show people through his resurrection who he really was, that he really was God. And there'd be no doubt in their mind after, after seeing him you know, resurrected from the grave three days later. Um, a grave that was untouched. Um, so that salvation through Jesus' death um, had to play out in his mind over those, over those few days for him to really understand. Um, but, you know, uh, when, he, when he realized that, that he had... Be, that he had uh, kind of bailed on Jesus, that he caved in the end, he was crushed. And, and he went and ran away and was crying, you know. Um, uh, 
he had no recourse, I guess, in that um, that aspect. But uh, it's really this is really was a to me is a tragic uh, uh, part of the Bible where um, all that happened to Jesus, uh, the terrible things that happened to him, and then the people. One of the people that was closest to him, you know, just ran away from him, ran away from him in the end and then uh, denied him, uh, just as Jesus had foretold. Um, and it's hard. Um, you know, we make lots of promises to people. We make lots of promises to God. Uh, but really, how many of them do we stay true to? Or how many of them do we modify a little bit here and there? Um, as it suits us. Uh, it's the kind of thing that uh, speaks to us when we read that. Like, are we doing what Peter has did to Jesus at that time? Are we neglecting Jesus and turning our back on him and running from him, denying him in our daily life? It's so easy to. I mean, sticking up for Jesus is not something that is cool in our secular world, uh, we need to uh, have the courage to make our own kind of cool. And um, that would go a long way. Anyway, Lord, uh, thank you for bringing us here today. And uh, give us that courage to never deny you, never deny uh, those around us that are deserving, that, uh, that we have to protect, that we have to take care of. Let us be able to put ourselves down a few notches and put what's really important up in the forefront, you, Lord. Uh, we thank you for all that you've done for us. We thank you for creating us. We wouldn't have this conversation if uh, you haven't created us in the first place and given us all these things around us and families and people in our lives that we have to work with and we have to minister to. Um, we pr I just want to be thankful for that and uh, uh, we pray all these things in your precious name. Amen. Thanks, everybody.